Hold on. Oh, wait, your video just disappeared. And Skype. <laughs> All right, now it's now it's showing. Okay, now I see it. Now I see the little red lights on. Okay. All right, we're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, guys. You want to turn on your camera or? Oh, because it's. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? And then just put a window in front of uh, my my fucking mug if it's no, back. Yours, you came back. You're good. You're okay, back. cool, cool. So All right. Well, welcome, guys. This is the first episode of. You know the nameless MMA podcast. Um, yeah, we'll brainstorm and try to figure it out. But uh, just kind of two two buds, two bros, bullshitting and uh, looking at the fights coming up this weekend. Basically, um, let me pull the card up. Actually, I wanna um, I wanna get this started off with uh, the Jake Paul card. Okay. Let's, let's since that's a little short one, let's do let's do the Jake Paul card. And yeah. Then, and then we'll uh, cause I just seen the weigh-ins actually right before I I hit you up. And dude, yeah, I think Frank Gore is just gonna maul Darren Williams. <laughs> like, they, oh he's yeah, a big yeah. Dude. He's a big motherfucker. Are they only doing three rounds though? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Let me pull up the card. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find right now. Um. I got the UFC card in the background too. Okay. I don't know those other fighters they got. It looks like they got a, a girl fight too. It's yeah, like Serrano. Huge, um, yeah, huge favorite. Minus 2,500. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. And then they got Liam Pero versus Yomar Alamo, I guess. Yeah. Now, the first got fight Nate Diaz. was only was it five rounds or eight rounds too. Uh, I think it was eight. Was it eight? All right. Did you see that uh, their press conference? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was wearing like the ski <laughs> mask. Sent the video to you. <laughs> and they were like, "Why are you wearing this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, it's because it's a bank so robbery. Much. <laughs> that shit's funny as hell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so what's your predictions? What do you got? What do you got on that? You know what? <sighs> I feel as though, uh, all respect to uh, Tyron, but I feel as though this is just kind of throwing uh, ex MMA fighters into the ring with a young, uh, you know, Jake Paul that has all of his, um, you know, youth and, and uh, you know, lack of head damage, which I think is a big role. Um, they're also talking about throwing in Nate Diaz eventually uh, to yeah. fight uh, Jake. But um, I don't know, man. I just see something in Tyron's eyes. I really do believe in, you know, CTE and, and the damage that one takes over a career, even if it's just in sparring. You know, th those concussions add up, you know, even if you're just taking jabs to the head. Um, I, I'm going to have to go with, you know, I put, the, I put money on Tyron in the fifth, but mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes and, you know, practicality it, it's way different when the bell rings and you see these two you know headed towards each other so i i my mind wants to go with jake but um but you know i'm putting uh you know money on on tyron in the fifth a part of me thinks that maybe it's a payout type situation i mean jake gifted in one of the pressers uh woodley a fucking new rolex i don't know if you saw that oh. but uh I got to imagine it's at least a couple thousand, if not a uh, hundred thousand. So, and then you got the 500,000 knockout clause uh, in the contract. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, that's exactly what I was going to bring up too. That I'm yeah. glad you brought that up because, you know, and, and I don't know if you caught in the press conference, Woodley mentioned that he was, he was already training. He said that he thought there was no way in hell yeah. this, the the uh, Tommy Fury fight was going to happen. He said, you know, just something in his mind or gut feeling said that fight wasn't going to go through. And, uh, yeah. you know, sure enough, that didn't happen. So he was already going for it. And, you know, I don't yeah. know. I just, I just think, you know, I, I do think Woodley's going to come out, you know, firing. I, I think the last yeah. fight. Paul did a really good job with kind of bouncing around a lot and, and avoiding uh -huh. a lot of his power shots. I mean, yeah, he caught him the one time, but you know, I, I don't, 
I don't see a, a, a knockout happening, honestly. I mean, I don't think Jake's power is enough to, to really, you know, hurt Woodley. Um, I mean, I, th- I feel yeah. like Woodley, you know, has been hit harder with lesser, you know, gloves in the UFC. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think with Woodley, you also got to kind of factor, you know, he kind of looked gassed at, at some points in that last fight, too. Yeah. Um, going into later rounds. And Jake, I mean, he looked crushed. For, for most of the fight, which I was kind of shocked by, you know, his cardio. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, with this with this second round, um, you know, this this second fight is Jake Paul's almost got something to prove again. You know, I mean, I think yeah. he probably thinks that with every fight because no one really trusts him and, and being a, a legit fighter. But, yeah. you know, I think this time around, giving that 500K clause, like, He's trying to to bait Woodley into making mistakes and going for that, you know. Yeah. To to punch himself out and kind of go crazy, where you know Jake might play a little bit more of a defensive fight, you know. Yeah, I only I really only see Jake winning on points. To be honest, to your point about the mm-hmm. knockout power, and you know it's been a season of surprise upsets, you know, with Oliveira and Pena and you know uh, Glover, you know, bringing in the MMA world mm-hmm. um, into this, but. You know, uh, good money on, on a bet. I would bet uh, Tyron in the fifth by uh, by uh, knockout, um, not a knockdown. I don't know if the fight would end there, but mm-hmm. that would be a prediction for that. Um, other than that, I'd have to say Jake Paul on points, to be honest. And then, you know, of course, if there is like, you know, somewhat of a, you know, hand in the outcome, uh, you know, it would just kind of put more credence on, on Jake Paul winning on points, mm-hmm. um, you know, cause the, the, the hype and the fame of the flames is, Hey, is this, the, the, the narrative is, uh, you know, Jake Paul is this punk, this punk bully. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've been looking for a real fighter to, to knock his block off. Right. And uh, in a weird way, I feel like the, the whole media and even the viewers have, have lost sight of that. Um, that fact. I don't know if it was somewhere, you know, after the Ben Askren fight, but uh, there there was some credence and legitimacy that was given to Jake Paul somehow, even though he's had what like four fights. Yeah, um, yeah, this will be his fifth career. Fight. So yeah. this is oddly enough turning into something, you know, it's generating income and revenue. Um, I got to say Jake Paul on points, but if there's a surprise upset, I would say Tyron in the fifth. Um, I guess we can move along now just to look at the other uh, fights on the card really quick, unless you want to make another point. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the the updated odds on FanDuel right now. Um, mm-hmm. And there's one thing that really kind of kind of has me a little bit kind of weirded out um, as far as odds. Um, so the fight to go to distance, uh, yes, is only minus 106 and no is minus 116. So it right. seems like there's a lot of people undecided on what's going to happen. Um, right. But this is the one that sticks out to me that I, I don't get is to be knocked down at no matter at any point in the fight, Jake Paul's plus 158 and Tyron Woodley's plus 126. So just to get knocked down, those odds are pretty damn close together that they're looking yeah. at you know, either one of them to go down at some point. So I, I think I might sprinkle – Jake Paul to win by points. I think he right now, Jake Paul by points or decisions plus 125. Um, Jake Paul KO TKOs plus 200. And then Woodley by TKO KOs plus 330. So I, I can't, I, might, I can't, I can't see Jake Paul getting knocked down, even yeah. a knockdown, down, let alone a knockout. I can't really yeah. see him. I mean, I could see him getting knocked out better <laughs> than I can just see him getting knocked down. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Um, I, th- I think what I'll do is I'll, I think at the plus 125, Paul by points or decision, I think I'm going to go with that. And, you know, I might sprinkle something where I might, you know, take the opposite of you, where I might do, you know, Paul by, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round. Something um, fun. Yeah. Yeah. Something it definitely later in the, the fight, I think, is, is yeah. going to happen. But. If Jake Paul knocks down or knocks out, you know, let alone, and for that matter, you know, Tyron. Mm-hmm. All hell breaks loose, and you know he's calling for Canelo. I don't know if you've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. calling for Canelo, bro. Yeah. 
the fuck is this that's guy just, on? That's just absurd. Yeah. That's just... I don't know, man. I mean, uh, sadly, I was looking forward to that Fury fight, even though I didn't think Fury looked like he looked like absolute dog shit and that undercard. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, he's not a name the, enough. The real boxer book. factor, though, is my thing. Like he's younger too. Like Woodley's thirty nine, dude. Like that's you're facing a twenty four year old kid who's in his prime, if you will, as far yeah. as you know, just your your overall. Well, you know, but, we really didn't you know talk much more about it, but the big kind of. Um, you know, to get down on Tyron, you know, everyone's been talking about him, you know, his trigger finger and being able to kind of pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's just, he hasn't been able to do that even in his last MMA fights. Um, he's just kind of been watching and sitting back. And I don't know if that's a testament to his knockout style. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I think he had a huge wrench, you know, thrown towards him because it's boxing now and you can't, go for the double and you can't, you know, elbow and the clinch and anything like that. So yeah. I, I just feel like it's kind of fire on top of fire for this guy. Um, he, you know, I would love to see him throw more volume, uh, even if he's just kind of throwing out jabs, you know, just to throw something mm -hmm. just to kind of get the wheels uh, turning in his head again. Yeah. Um, but if, you know, I, I feel as though that's something that we'll be able to kind of see within the first 30 seconds of the first round. Um, and uh, if he's not throwing just to throw, then um, Jake Paul on points, I think. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know much about the, the other fighters on this card. Uh, to your point, Darren Williams, he's a basketball player. Frank Gore is a monster uh, running yeah. back. I think he's third all-time rushing in the NFL um, behind, like, uh, Walter Payton and, like, Jim Brown or something crazy like that. Yeah. Um, I got Frank Gore just on sheer, you know, raw strength. Mm -hmm. um, don't know too much about Serrano or Gutierrez, the 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 female fight. Uh, I like Amanda. Just you know, uh, if I had to just pick them, just knowing nothing about their background, that's a ten round fight too. Right. Uh, Darren and Frank is a four round fight. Uh, Do you got the odds for that? Because they're not on FanDuel right now. No, no, I just got the the Wikipedia up. I card. thought when I uh, when I saw that their way in, I I thought I saw Frank Gore was like plus one fifty, and I'm like, no way, he's got to be an underdog in this fight. Like, yeah, there's just and Darren Williams actually looks kind of fat. <laughs> yeah, like Frank Gore just is like all pure muscle. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I I never would have even imagined that Darren Williams would have been uh you know in a, in a fight let alone this card. Right. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. All right, well, we'll we'll get on with that circus and uh, move to the real deal here. <laughs> well, let me let me just run through. So at light welterweight, you got Liam Paro and Yomar Alamo. I don't know anything about them. Uh, yeah, no, no. Super middleweight, Anthony Taylor, Chris Avila. That's Nate Diaz's guy. Um, I don't know if you remember him. He yeah. kind of shadows uh, Diaz. Uh, it's his uh, kind of protege. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I probably would say Anthony Taylor. I think he's actually more of an established boxer from what the presser conveyed. I think he has more fights, but um, just to throw that pick out there. And then at cruiserweight, uh, Jalon Love and Marcus Oliveira. Again, uh, no idea. I didn't get a chance to watch any of these people's highlights or fights. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, those are pretty much our picks as they stand. Yeah. Moving over to the UFC. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh um, I got the uh, prelims up on, on the UFC's website, so I'm just going to go down in that order. Um, and, dude, these, I didn't realize these started like 3 o'clock Central. So oh, yeah. that's, that's uh, an early early fight night, um, you know, especially for, for West Coast. But, yeah, um, the prelims. Yeah, but uh, – First one I got up is that um, middleweight Gerald Mearshart versus Dustin Stoltless. Um, Mearshart's a, a minus two twenty five favorite. Um, uh, I'm looking at his history. I mean, there's there's a lot of names, big names that he's lost to. Uh, Kevin Holland, Jack Herman Hermanson. Um, he lost to Kazmat. Um, you know who? No one wants to fight that guy. That guy's just an animal. Um, yeah. But he's won his last two by submission. Um, oh, nice. And looking at the odds on, on FanDuel, the 
Gerald Mayorship by submission is only plus 180. So it sounds like they're really looking for him to, to take it down. And, you know, I, I don't think you can bet by, you know, what he actually chokes him out with, you know, rare, rare naked choke or arm bar yeah. stuff like that. But, I mean, he's a minus 245 favorite on, on FanDuel right now. And he opened at 225. So the money is definitely coming in on him. Um, yeah, you know, this is for the first fight uh, in the prelims? Yeah. Or which one is it? Yeah, the first fight in prelims. So, I mean, if, if I'm going to see a heavy favorite like this, I mean, my bet is probably just not go the distance. I mean, these fights are so unpredictable. I've learned over the past couple cards just betting, you know, on, you know, so-and-so by TKO or knockout, and they end up winning by submission. <laughs> so, I, I tend to do, is this you know, uh, is it? Is this the Levitt Sales fight or the Stolzfuss uh, Mirror Chart? Stolzfuss, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I got, I'll probably do, will the fight go the distance? No. And then that's that's at minus 215. So they're definitely looking for this one to end at some point early. Um, and I mean, like I said, going off his last two fights, he both were, one was a guillotine he won by, and the other one was a rare naked joke. So. Yeah. Some sort of choking. I mean, I don't know if I feel confident enough to to have him win by submission. I feel like that's the obvious choice. So did you catch the weight class? Uh, middleweight, one eighty five. So, um, right. yeah, he's thirty three and 14, 34 years old. He's been around for a while, and Dustin's thirty. He's uh, thirteen and three. And he's coming off two losses, uh, one to a decision, and then he lost by submission his last fight. So he's definitely, yeah. you know, susceptible to it. But he was on uh, he was on quite a win streak before his last two losses, though. I mean, not really facing anyone, you know, that we would recognize. It looks like, you know, he only had three UFC fights because um, he came yeah. up through Dana White's Contender Series. Yeah. And, you know, he won his contender series and then he lost both his his fights on undercards. So um no, I'm I'm probably definitely going with, with Mirror Shirt on this one. Um I, I don't see that one being really okay. oh, I'm sorry you broke up. I'll take Dustin. I mean I wouldn't mind, you know, if I had to make a Oh, uh can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, I'll take Dustin. I mean, if I had to make a pick, uh -huh. um, you know, so what catches my eye are the records. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Father Time has to be a That's a fucking record right there. Yeah. Uh, 13 and 3, you said this is his fourth UFC fight. I wouldn't be, you know, surprised if this was his, you know, coming out party or whatever they call it, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, the fighter gets his legs under him mm -hmm. and uh, really kind of you know, makes a showcase of an event, uh, I wouldn't mind picking Dustin, you know, and the odds aren't, you know, there's not too much of a chasm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'd go with Dustin. Do um, you want to go through each of the prelims or just whatever kind of piques your intrigue? Um, I mean, I feel like we're going to, I mean, if we, if I say we go through each one and then if we kind of just have no interest, just move to the next one, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, so. I, I, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I wouldn't mind just jumping to the, uh, to the main. Yeah. And then, you okay. know, cause I, I also wanted to talk, you talked about that rare naked, um, being a possible submission. Uh, I want to talk about that Pena, uh, Nunez, uh, <laughs> you know, we haven't, we haven't kind of recapped any of that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then the Oliveira and, and what was your takeaway? If you had to kind of just broad stroke recap, uh, the night, uh, in particular, Oliveira, Poirier, um, Pena, Nunez, you know, somewhat of a upset night. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm speechless really. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. I, I, you know, that kind of sucks that that wasn't the last card of the year. Um, cause this card kind of lacks that star power. Um, yeah. you know, but I do see some potential upsets on this card, but you really kind of yeah. have to follow this to, to really know you know, um, where those might happen, but no, that card was insane. I mean, I think that was, even if you were just a casual UFC fan or fight fan in general, yeah. 
I think if you got to see any part of that card, your interest just peaked <laughs> because that was uh, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. And O'Malley, I don't know if you heard, yeah. uh, he said he was ninety nine percent sure he was going to pull out that fight um, because he had a rib. Oh injury. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, damn, dude, like you had a rib injury your whole training camp, and that's 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 you, like not at one hundred percent, like that's scary. Yeah. The dude just was yeah. piecing him up, you know, like nothing, but. Yeah. Um, it's, it doesn't sound like he's going to be fighting anytime soon. He said, you know, he's going to take some time off. He's fought you know, right. three times, you know, in the last you know year. Or so, um, yeah. you know, he does deserve a, a big name fight for sure. I think he's proven himself and, you know, Cody Garbrandt made a, made a pretty, you know, obvious statement about him not really fighting anyone that, that good. Um, yeah. so I think the next fight is really going to be interesting who they pair him up with. Because, yeah. you know, I think UFC, I think Dana White's going to be like, all right, this kid is is got potential star power. Let's let's really put him up in a, a top 10, yeah. top 5 situation and, and see how he really does. Um, so, and then I don't know. I, before, 13th, like, I think, uh, he's ranked. Oh, 13th, um, yeah. After that fight. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one other thing I want to bring up that before I get into the Nunez situation, um, did you see the, the Twitter riff between Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you... Well, the last tweet that I saw on on Diaz's behalf, and I'm losing favor for Diaz because he's just he's coming across as not just not a good guy. I mean, chalk it up to the game and talking shit, but you know, he, he basically called Dustin a loser and he said that, uh, the, you know, he wasn't worth his pay to get into right. that January, uh, to get into that January card. And, uh, and so they're pushing it back to 271. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I saw. That's what I saw is just Nate totally kind of dishing on Dustin. Um, well, but did you catch, was there more? So he's got one fight left on his contract, and yeah, I don't see him re-signing. I I just think, you know, what's what's the point? You know, the guy rarely fights anymore. He's lost his last. McGregor, two. McGregor would be the point. Yeah, but even McGregor, did you see what he tweeted out after the Oliver fight? He was just like, you know, I'm next. I'm skipping the line, basically. And then they asked Oliver about that, and he's like, dude, I, that'd be dumb not to take that fight. You know, Connor's been looking like absolute dog shit his last three fights. That'd be, uh, to me, in my opinion, that'd be an easy fight for Oliver. I think Oliver would just mop the floor. Yeah, exactly. And that's why Oliveira said he would accept it. And, you know, that's going to – Connor ranked ninth uh, as a lightweight, by the way. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Oliveira the champ. And then fifth in the pound-for-pound pound rankings. So, mm -hmm. uh, it'll definitely be a, a jump up, a leg up, no pun intended for McGregor, uh, <laughs> you know, fighting Oliveira. But, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> man, that break was <laughs> – man, that break was nasty. <laughs> <laughs> the stanky uh, leg. <laughs> I love him, man. Yeah, I mean, that was rough. That was rough. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, I. I think the payday with Oliveira is more likely. Obviously, um, you know, Diaz was like, you know, he tweeted, uh, you know, Connor's leg needs to grow back. He needs to get a fight under his belt before I go in the ring with him. It does kind of make me think, you know, unless some absurd kind of bizarro world reality unfolds where they both end up in Bellator, you know, for the mm -hmm. third fight. Uh, I got to imagine that Diaz would resign with the UFC, um, maybe re-up on another six-fight contract. But, he, you know, we're talking about CTE and, and brain damage, and, you know, he, he's on that short list, uh, quickly turning into a short Garber, bus. That motherfucker needs to retire. He's on that short list, quickly turning into a short bus of the, the fighters mm -hmm. that are going to be fighting Jake Paul. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, you know, fighters with – <laughs> brain damage and, and that's not throwing any shade to anybody but it's like that's kind of who, who they're feeding to jake paul unfortunately that that's the ufc's retirement plan unfortunately um so uh but hey a big payday for tyron you know to kind of circle back on that it's good to see that he's getting paid um but uh you know i, I wouldn't put it past diaz to resign again um you know <sighs> He has some fights lined up for him now, you know, Dustin, McGregor, 
I think he's I think he threatened an Oliveira fight as well. Um so you know there we go. But to get back to the I don't know if you wanted to navigate back to the card, uh the, the card we have Saturday or more yeah. about Pena and Oliveira. Uh yeah. to, to me, really quick on the whole Pena jazz, uh, you know, I feel as though initially as a viewer, I, I thought that that stoppage was sus. You know, I don't know the inner workings of why Amanda would have kind of, uh, if she did have a hand in, you know, that fight not going her way to the extent that maybe there was some premeditation. Um, you've seen way worse chokeholds and rare nakeds in the UFC. And, and you know, for the acclaimed elite level that Amanda is, to see her tap, um, Either A tells me she was defeated mentally at, at a whole nother level where, where she's never been kind of pressed, or two, maybe there was some something fishy going on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, truth is, I guess we'll never know. Uh, yeah. What I do know is Kayla Kayla Harris is a training partner of Nunez. You know, and that's the mega fight that they were looking to set up after the the Pena fight. If uh, Amanda were to win, um, could have been a reason why she didn't want to you know, win that because then they're going to immediately toss her to her training partner, Kayla, mm-hmm. um, you know, who's this generation's 2.0 Ronda Rousey training yeah. partner of Rousey, by the way, in the Olympics, uh, Judikin. Um, so, you know, maybe Amanda had in the back of her mind, Hey, I could get a nice trilogy payout with uh, Pena mm-hmm. and uh, you know, so we'll never know, but uh, if we're looking at it, you know, the, the sheer kind of underdog and, and doggedness of uh, Pena, that, that was mm-hmm. truly entertaining. And, uh, you know, when she was just standing there toe to toe and just, you know, throwing those right down the, you know, right down the line, yeah. right down the center line uh, at Nunez and landing, she took, she took a couple, you know, she was left with a shiner, mm-hmm. but uh, man, that was entertaining. And that was a hell of an underdog, uh, you know, comeback. Yeah. Um, he drew Bronx himself throwing money on her like a psycho. And uh, yeah. and hitting that that was that was impressive. Um, you threw money on Pena. No, nah, I'm saying you, dude. Fucking. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I called it. I called it. Props, yeah. man. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you fucking hit he, it right in the head, and uh, yeah. And honestly, dude, to 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 your point of where when you said, um, you know, that Amanda just didn't look at herself, is you know, I I actually saw a little highlight video of that fight again, and you know, she was eating jabs nonstop. Yeah. She was just bop, bop, head just hitting back, snapping back. And I'm, I'm like, thinking about her other fights. And I'm, like, you know, she had a lot more movement. She Like, she would get hit and just, like, stand there. And it's, like, yeah. you know, that she just did not look, you know. Like, I, it makes me wonder if the narrative had something to do with it. Because typically Amanda's just been this, like, massive underdog in all of her fights against Holm and Cyborg and Ronda and – Sepchenko, and it just makes you wonder if, you know, she felt sort of vilified uh, and she wasn't able to kind of get up for this fight um, yeah. in a way, you know, obviously I'm sure that there are some MMA experts and, and fighters that would think that that's an absurd statement, but mm. she did not look herself another, you know, her child, you know, she has a family now. It's kind of hard to wake up every morning and, uh, you know, satin sheets and then, kind of have that hunger still so that that you know might have been a factor um shifting gears to the Oliveira fight and Poirier fight really quick that was yeah. just ugly that was <laughs> you know al- along the lines of that being really out of character I think for uh Dustin you know for him to yeah. just kind of uh, sit under uh Oliveira's mount um I believe it was essentially that whole second round um that was and just Poirier nasty was piecing them up I mean you know that whole first yeah early round, on yeah that first early round on. Poirier yeah. just looked like he was dominating. I mean yeah you know, yeah that's why I was I kept telling you we were texting on the side about it and I'm just like man dude like Oliver like you know more leg kicks take him down like it's over like I don't yeah. see you know Dustin's game is standing you know his yeah. his wrestling and grappling it just looked like shit you know I mean yeah. obviously you know kudos to, to Oliveira. he's a on the cage. Brilliant, Black yeah. belt, <laughs> like yeah. you know, his jujitsu is just ridiculous. But you know, like that, I that's some fights. Like I just don't understand. Like you know the guy's weakness going into the fight, and then it seems like that just 
goes out the window sometimes with some of these yeah. guys. Is, yeah. You know, they start appealing to, to the ego and, you know, yeah, you see, right. you saw a lot of that with like Khabib stand up, you know, him trying to turn himself into a striker. And mm-hmm. luckily he never had to pay the price for that, but that's just an example, example, yeah. um, a shallow example, <laughs> example, Ex- example, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but <laughs> Yeah, we'll name we'll name it uh, example. I just made up a word. I don't know what the fuck that. We were going to say the nameless podcast. So I'm digging that. <laughs> example. <laughs> nameless. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that was nasty. Uh, you know, seeing Poirier take those elbows and and uh, yeah. oh, oh man, that was it, it was like watching like a like an anaconda wa- uh, eat like a live uh, you know, elk <laughs> or something. It was, it was brutal. We got like, the Discovery Channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, man, my, my, you know, uh, conspiracy theorist eyes thought that that may have been something funny, uh, with, you know, Dustin just kind of sitting there and taking that, but, yeah. you know, maybe it's just a testament to his grit, uh, being able to take that because <laughs> I would, I'd, I would not be able to fucking take that, dude. That was <laughs> ugly, dude. That he was, Oliveira was landing elbows directly to the dome and Poirier was just still alive. Like just yeah. still taking it. I'm surprised he didn't get cut. That was I think that was more impressive than him not, you know, going to sleep. Just, I, you know, I, I think we're gonna have to throw Poirier on that short bus too, man. You know, <laughs> with Diaz and Tyron because you, you don't come out the same after a fight like that. Right. Um, yeah. And he's been through know. so many wars too. Yeah, like, yeah. What do you think about Gaethje? Uh, I I feel as though the your Gaethje is in your. Is so, let's be real. I, I feel, <laughs> he's going to be the driver. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we're either going to get murdered <laughs> talking all this shit, or we're going to get fucking, where we're going to, you know, this is going to become hugely successful. You know, one or one or the other. <laughs> no, I think, I think that is going to go the same way. I mean, I think he could clip Oliveira, but, you know, Dustin, like I said, Dustin pieced him up in that first in that first round. If you if you go and rewatch it, um, you know he he took some shots, you know, and he yeah. he didn't really get you know bothered by him for the most part. But you're saying and, Oliveira? Yeah, and I mean Dustin is no slouch when it comes to you know throwing hands. So yeah, Oliveira proved. Uh, you know, people said he couldn't take a punch, and you know had some quit in him, but he definitely proved himself. Um, I was just gonna say really quick, you know, I feel as though your Chandlers and your Gaethje's, you know, that that fighting style to me is uh, obsolete. Um, mm. Interestingly enough, though, you put McGregor in there with Oliveira. I think you know McGregor could get a, a flash uh, knockout. You know, mm. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, other than that, I mean, I'm not too interested in watching any more Poirier, Chandler, or Gaethje fights. I, I feel as though this is a perfect. Um, you know, lane for uh, um, what's his name, Islam uh, Makachev yeah. to slide yeah. in. What do you think about him and Benil? Uh, if you had to, if you had to make a quick pick be- uh, between Islam Makachev and Benil Dariush. Um. Well, any before, ideas, any thoughts? Really quick, I want to give you a scenario. I'm curious to see what your opinions on. So, say Gaethje jumps in there. Oliveira gets through Gaethje. Who's his next fight? Who's uh, Oliveira's? Yeah. Uh, winner between Dariush and Makachev, I would imagine. You think so? Yeah. Because I feel like everyone's just ducking Islam right now. Yeah. And Well, no, no, no. I'm thinking of uh, Kazmat. I'm sorry. Because uh, isn't Kazmat in the same same division? Um, I don't see him in the rankings. I don't think so. Off the top of my head. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Kamzat uh, Chimay? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah, he's, like he's, the... he's 11th uh, in welterweight. It's uh, Kamaru, uh, Kamaru Usman's uh, division. Oh, that's a yeah. fight I need to see. That's yeah. a fight I need to see. I think, honestly, in that, there was not to get off topic, sorry for even bringing him up, but you know he's he's literally won and finished in every single fight he's been in. I mean, given he's only been in the UFC for four fights, 
and hasn't faced, you know, he's, he's almost like an O'Malley. He hasn't faced really, you know, high quality opponents yet. But, you know, six KOs, four submissions, like 10 and 0. Yeah. I mean, the dude's 6'2, he's just a beast. I mean, I don't yeah. see anyone in that division even. Yeah, they're coming, him. man. They're, they're crawling. Those, those fucking, yeah. you know, Middle Eastern Russian type, um, you know, they're coming. I mean, I could see him playing Covington. That'd be, I think huh? that'd be a Maybe. Decent, decent match, but yeah, but anyways, 77% yeah. striking accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at his stats. Uh, 77% striking accuracy on the UFC site, 67% grappling accuracy. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's no one's, see. No one's last made fight. Last three uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, so. Oh, it's funny because he fought uh, uh, more. Uh, Mir Sharp, you know, remember we were talking about that guy with that record, 33 and 14, uh, in the prelims, uh, main event of the prelims. Yeah. That was uh, hey, Islam's last fight. No, 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 no. He fought on the uh, the Blackowitz to share card. He, Jing Lang Lee, he, he, he choked him out. He could have yeah, yeah. He had his back and he was just throwing bombs. But yeah. I don't know if it, it was just more of a stat thing where he wanted to choke him out and get the sub. But yeah, he could easily finish that fight just pounding away. But he decided to to choke him out. But. He knocked. He knocked. Freaking! I don't know how you pronounce this guy's name. Mirshart. How are we pronouncing his name? Yeah, Mirshart. Yeah, Mirshart. He knocked him out in 17 seconds. I didn't see that. Dude, one. It was bad. Yeah, wow. you need to you need to check that clip out. He he folds like a lawn chair. Like it's one Jesus. of those nasty knockouts where like his his leg like folds behind him. Like, like you saw that Tui Tavasa fight you know how he knocked that dude out and his leg just did the same thing where he gets caught up underneath him uh, yeah that's guys. another reason yeah i'm picking uh Stolfus <laughs> for sure after that after, after that man it's hard to come back from um yeah what yeah how about weidman huh put weidman in there <laughs> but just obscure references to fighters that have broken a leg weidman versus mcgregor <laughs> Oh, I thought that was my um, shortlist reference because he's the conductor. No, 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 no. I, I, I have the rankings up here, and uh, Weidman's name caught my eye, and I was just, you know, riffing on the fact that we were just jumping to obscure fighters, and uh, uh, I don't want to keep on going down this rabbit hole because then we we start to get into the Adonis uh, say. No, yeah, no, that was uh, well, that in the same say. division. That's the only reason why I brought him up. So. Oh, no worries, no worries at all. No worries at all. But, uh, um. Moving forward um, on the main card, Cub Swanson is back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I forgot about Cubs, that. Man. Again, yeah, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but, you know, we joke about the, the, the brain damage and everything, and that's another guy that's just been in some absolute wars, um, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking more so uh, Darren Elkins, uh, the guy he's fighting, speaking of wars. Yeah, you, know what I'm you like him? You like him in the fight? No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, shit. If we're gonna talk about anyone being in wars, I feel as though Darren Elkins of a one up on Swanson. Yeah, um, yeah. Twenty seven to nine. Who do you have? Quick pick on that. Um, there's some thirty eight. He's coming off a loss. I mean, Elkins. Elkins has the uh, the momentum going. He's got you know back to back finishes in his last two fights. <laughs> uh, Cubs coming off a, a, a knockout that he suffered in the first round um, just by a body kick <laughs> and punches. Wow. So, <laughs> so I Fuck, mean, man. yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm probably, I think, I think Swanson is the favorite. Let me double check. Uh, Dude, that's so rough. A body kick knockout. Yeah. Jesus well, I'm doing Christ. The ribs, man. It's over. I mean, some of it, that, that don't take uh, Swanson's a minus 200. Yeah, I didn't get a ball. chance to. Open minus 200. Yeah. Um, I don't know what he is exactly right now. But, um, but yeah, I got to. It's going to be a brawl. It's going to be a brawl. Yeah, I don't see it going to distance. I don't, <laughs> I don't see this being a, a, a statistician's, uh, you know. Um, night out. I feel like this is just going to be a brawl. 
So um, Cubs minus 198. So the odds haven't changed that much. He opened two. It's more. a toss up for yeah. me. I mean, I would like to see Elkins with like a, a surprise, you know, stunner. But yeah, yeah. I don't I know mean, if I'd put money even, on it. Even the fight going the distance, it's yes, minus 116, no, minus 112. So. I mean, this could either be over in a, in a blink of an eye or it's going to distance. So, yeah, I'm staying away from this personally. I, I don't like anything about this yeah. fight except for pure entertainment. You know, just known Cub for a long time, um, you know. Yeah. Ferreira, um, Gamro. So I, I think Gamro just murders this guy. Um, Ferreira, really? I don't know if you saw him at the weigh-in. They had to put the towel up. And he just looked like absolute shit. Um, yeah, okay. I don't, I don't see him. And if if you really want to kind of even touch a little bit more on that, um, Gamrot was an absolute killer uh, over in the European circuit, um, and yeah. he's he's nineteen and one, <laughs> and wow. he just beat Jeremy Stevens. Um, I don't know if you remember him. He beat him by submission, but um, yeah, a little heathen. Yeah, yeah. So that's you know he's coming off a pretty big win there, and wow. Ferreira, he his last two he lost to uh, Dariush and then he lost to Gregor Gillespie. Um, mm. But that Dariush one, I mean, he went to a decision. That's so that's pretty impressive. But you know we we want to talk about you know Father Time. You know he's thirty six and and this guy's thirty one, and yeah. I mean that's not <laughs> too too big of a you know jump, but um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think, uh, Gamrot wins by TKO. Um, nice. I, I, I'm probably going to sprinkle on that. I don't think the, the other guys, are, the Freire guys, a um, Brazilian guy. So I don't think he'll be able to do anything as far as, you know, getting him on the ground or submitting him, but I, really? I, think, no, I don't see it happening at all. Did you I, get any, uh, did you catch any of Gamrot's uh, ground game by, by chance? Um, I mean, the one against Stevens, he just rocked him, um, and he got him in a Kamara. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's a hard one to pull off. I mean, if you can yeah. get, you know, someone in a Kamara and win, I mean, you know, that's that's pretty impressive. But we but, don't have, like, footage of him, like, you know, in a defensive trying to fight the submissions or anything like that. Oh no, I haven't. Uh, I mean, the last, if you want to go back to his, his only loss, because he's 19 and 1, it was a, uh, it went to a decision. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'd go Gamera. Gamera. So, but, yeah. Um, Ricky for, Simone, dude. He's, a, he's yeah, a for Simone and uh, Sun Sal, I, you know, I, I got to pick Simone. Um, yeah, he, he looked like, uh, I was watching a little bit of highlights of him. I think he was like, uh, I think he, he just had like this kind of, uh, you know, attack in him. Um, I believe, you know, I recall watching him, uh, on the ground, uh, just kind of getting after it with his last fight. It escapes me who he fought last, but, um, uh, and I think Sal, yeah. And I think the sun's house coming off with three losses. Um, Yep. yep. Last I looked at his record. Um, yeah, he lost. Uh, actually, he lost to Cody Garbrandt last. And then, yeah. Uh, Corey Sanhagen. I mean, those are two no slouches, though. I mean, that's, yeah. that's tough. And he beat Aljamain Sterling, who's a champion yeah. right now. So I mean, yeah. you know, he's he's definitely he's he he went one and one versus T.J. Dillashaw. Um, and you know, it, he, it, the loss to Marlon Moraes, I don't think you know that kind of sucks. And obviously, your two losses, but I, I, you know, I could, that's another thing, you know, 39 years old, Ricky Spones, 29, again, you know, yeah. if you want to go that route again. But, um, I mean, I, I could see us going to a decision, but I could also see this being a possible fight of the night because, you know, just with the, the level of competition these guys have faced, I could see this being a slugfest for yeah. sure. Ricky Simone not uh not ranked. This would be a huge no. uh Yeah. That's Kuno's twelfth right now, right? Yeah. Well shit, we might see an O'Malley uh Ricky fight. Uh that that wouldn't be, 
You know, I mean, they might want to start keep on pushing O'Malley above the rankings because O'Malley's 13th, remember, mm-hmm. Sun Sal's 12th um, in the bantamweight. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That is true. So depending on uh, – well, Shit, yeah, Or if Simone pulls us off and he gets ranked, that would be – it. That'd be a pretty raw fight, too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what you know. That's what I'm kind of alluding to. You know, same division as Dominic Cruz. He just had that that great victory this last pay per view. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm going with Simone. Are we? It's, is it Simone or uh, Simon? No, it's Simone. Simone. Yeah, I'm going with Simone. Just based off of, like I said, you know, I only caught a couple of. Uh, minutes of some of his highlights but I, I, he just came off as like a dog you know just on yeah. the, i think i think i saw some ground game highlights where he was just kind of getting after it uh jujitsu wise so um not sure that he's going to be able to kind of rag dallas sun Sal, but i feel as though sun Sal's on the back leg of his career and uh ricky's kind of you know he has more fight in him but you know i wouldn't put it past rafael um yeah. who are you picking if you had a are you going with simone yeah, uh, I just looked at the the fight to go to distance. It's minus one fifty two. Um, I think both of these guys are tough as nails. Um, I don't see really finish happening. I feel like you know in a bantamweight division, especially these guys, you know they could throw as hard as they want. They their knockouts don't really come that often in that division. Um, but, Simone the favorite, by the way. Uh, yeah, at least on the UFC website. Yeah. Yeah, he's minus two ninety five right now. So if we're talking knockouts. I'm saying I'm going with the Sun Sal, um, to be honest. Yeah, I could see that. <clears throat> Excuse me, as an upset. Yeah. But other than that, uh, I think part of my picks I picked uh, Simone. Simone. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Like I said, as far as the main card, yeah, I'll stay away from the Swanson one. I'm all in on Gamrot finishing Ferreira. Um, but that's another one that you didn't really mention too is that's Gamrot's not ranked. Ferreira's also ranked number twelfth. So that's back to back fights where, you know, the favorite is unranked over, you know, a ranked opponent. So that's kinda that's kinda yeah. something to to, you know, take yeah. with a grain of salt. But yeah. Um but yeah, I'll probably I'll probably put him in a parlay or something. Um yeah, yeah. you know, his odds are a little bit too high for me to kind of just, you know, go go with it because you know compared to what he opens at 275 and he's all the way up to 295 that tells me a lot of people are riding simone <laughs> so yeah yeah did you get my picks by the way uh did you send them I sent you a sc- uh yeah messenger i think i sent you a screenshot just with the circled in red my picks oh uh, um, yeah it's, oh they're there okay yeah I got it's it. a four leg so okay. i'll catch up you for sure, for sure. Um, so, yeah, next one, I mean, we don't really have to spend that much time on it. I think Amanda Lemos is going to Lemos dominate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was watching uh, her last fight, and uh, she knocked out um, Ruiz, I think her name is, Yeah. Um, in, like, the first however many seconds. And then Angela Hill, you know, she, she's a seasoned vet at this point, but I, I just really don't see her fight IQ and, and the kind of uh, – you know, the, the killer instinct there, to be honest, um, for her to get a W over Limos. Um, Limos is up and coming, 10 and 1 and 1. Uh, Angela Hill, 13 and 10. Limos uh, on the UFC site, favorite, uh, minus 310. So, yeah, uh, Limos was a part of my four leg parlay, um, second uh, behind uh, Simone. So, um, did she uh was she one of the ones that missed weight though? Uh Lamosh? I thought uh, you know what? I don't know. That escapes me. Uh okay. didn't hear about that, but maybe you know something I don't know. No, I know um, someone someone is coming in a little bit heavier. Um but it's it, they're they're not oh wait, actually I just pulled it up. It's actually a different fight I was thinking about. She came in at right at one fifteen and Angela came in at one fifteen and a half, so Never mind. That was a different fight I was thinking of at the on the undercard. So but yeah, uh again, her odds are way too high. Um I think she's at minus three ninety five or something crazy. Three thirty five Lamosh. So Yeah, um, interestingly yeah. enough, they're they're ranked um right after one another. Uh Lemosh is eleventh, Hill is twelfth. 
Um, yeah. My question to you with this one, since her odds are too high, um, do you see her finishing Hill? Um, yeah, I do. I, you know, I think her tenacity is a step up. And, uh, you know, with that 10 and one record, I feel like this is, uh, you know, chumming the waters for her. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I only ask that because going off of the last, what was this, two, four, five fights in Angela Hill, um, she's gone to a decision every time. <laughs> so, yeah. I, you know, she could definitely take it with the best, but, you know, yeah. um, I, I almost view Name, Amanda, uh, like, uh, like a cyborg power, like, yeah. you know. Same, like, same division as, uh, as your girl, uh, Claudia. Yeah, she, she uh, lost her. Claudia Gadeja. Just sure. just recently retired, you know. Yeah. That only that only fans retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just talking shit, guys. Uh, I, I don't know what her deal is, but you know, we did see that she recently retired. Best of luck to her. Um she might in follow, that division. Uh, Paige Van Zyne to bare knuckle. <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. There you go. Rose, of course, the champ of that uh women's strawweight division. Yep. Uh she's looking for that Carlos Esparza fight. Um Thoughts on that? That seems to be. I, I, does Rose have a loss against Carla? Is that what that beef is between them? Or do you know um, let's see. Well, I didn't. I didn't hear about that. What happened? Uh, well, you know, Rose is looking to, uh, looking for that Carla Esparza fight, and Carla's. Uh, I think she's on a couple fight win streak, so she's calling out the champ. Uh, I think they wow. have some uh, history from before, early on in their career, but uh, 20, I'm not too sure. 2014, uh, she lost to Carla Esparza on the Ultimate Fighter 20 finale by his uh, rear naked choke. Wow, that's that's <laughs> fucking beef right there. Right? That's an ICU. An ICU. All right. Um, let's see. That's yeah, that's point. interesting. So we got, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, Lamoche. Um, so, so I got Lamoche uh, for that one. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, uh, Bilal, our boy, our boy from the Burbs. Yeah, um, yeah. he's fighting Wonder Boy. Uh, what do you think? Do you think he has the style to to be able to catch lightning in a bottle with Wonder Boy? I um, don't. I don't. Yeah. I think uh, you know. And I've read a bunch of kind of articles, and I've I've listened to a couple even streams on people kind of giving their two cents like we're doing and everything points to to this going decision uh wonder boy that's 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 his game you know yeah he's, although he's coming off of a uh, um pettis knockout is that correct no uh thompson's last oh wait actually let me sorry wrong one no he lost to gilbert burns uh by decision um, okay did pettis knock him out though i think yeah I that was back 2019 uh oh wow so it's yeah. possible it's possible yeah um yeah. unless you know muhammad did his work you know i think he's a he's a lawyer as well from the university of illinois um you know he, he might have the the um you know the shrewdness to be able to pull it off in a stunning upset you know clipping thompson but mm -hmm. You know, uh, hard pressed to see that happen. I I went with Wonder Boy on this one. As a part, yeah, uh, as I was. Part uh, of, uh, I mean, all respect to Blau. I mean, his record. You know, he, what is he nine and three? I think in the UFC. Um, or yeah. Ten and three. Um, you know, unfortunately, he hasn't won over the fans. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter just saying, you know, another boring Blau fight <laughs> coming up because. He's gone to a decision every every single fight except for one, where he choked someone out, and uh, yeah. he did get a he did get a KO um, a, a long time ago, back in 2016. <laughs> but yeah. every other every other fight, just like you know, um, Stephen Thompson is his decision. So um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna ride with Thompson in decision. I think you know his karate skills. Uh, yeah play into it way too much he'll be able to keep that distance and you know blow if he can get him down um you know i think it'll it'll be interesting to see how thompson reacts but you know i don't see him being able to get that close to be able to take him down so yeah you know take that for whatever it is yeah 
All right, moving on. Um, we, got, we got to the finale here. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I was thoroughly impressed by um, Chris's, uh, you know, kind of resume and, and his past couple fights, uh, watching some of his highlights. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Dacus, is that is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Um, I, I'm going with him, you know, just to throw my pick out there really quick. Uh, Derek Lewis coming off of a loss against Cyril Gan, I believe. Um, He's actually four and one in his last five fights, uh, which is, you know, to me kind of fascinating. But again, he has that, that last loss off of Cyril Gan. Um, Chris Dawkins, I think his last four fights, he has three uh, first round knockouts. Uh, which is as brutal as it sounds. Um, you know, both knockout power. Um, I'm going to have to go with Dawkins, uh here, to be honest. Um, I don't think it's going to be an easy feat or task at hand by any means, but, uh, you know, I just feel as though uh, he could he could uh, clip Lewis in this one. Um, he, he's actually the favorite on the UFC site, um, minus 150. Lewis is a 125. Uh, Lewis coming in about 30 pounds heavier, though. Um, not sure if that's going to be to his advantage or disadvantage. Um, what else can we look at here? Um, Check out that uh, that message I just sent you. <laughs> yeah. And also, <laughs> I'm going to send you a uh, this website that I, I just actually found while we're doing this. It's It shows that little screenshot just gives you kind of a, a small example of what yeah. they give you but if you scroll down underneath that it shows every single fight um <coughs> oh yeah sure dog yeah i know so, sure dog yeah, you gotta so, know sure dog yeah so i'm just been um, chilling on that but yeah dude i mean i i honestly did not know uh chris Dawkins, um before yeah. before hearing yeah. his name in this fight and then i started doing you know my research on it and uh yeah. you know definitely definitely impressed with his his last couple fights i mean and the, he's only fought you know four fights in the ufc and every single one's ended in, in tkos and ko's yeah. so um yeah. you know again if you want to really nitpick things you know th again the the level of um talent compared to what Derek lewis has faced you know is kind of night and day but he's still young in the game i mean Derek lewis has been around for a minute in the ufc um facing top competition and and just taking the trash out <laughs> and knocking them out yeah but, um yeah i this is <laughs> instead of picking a winner because i do think this could easily go either way um it's just a matter of who gets clipped uh i don't see it going over two and a half rounds so yeah that's that's really going to be my pick for the fight um even for it not to go to distance the the juice on that's just way too much too so um yeah. So, yeah, I'll probably end up just taking the under uh, when the fight's going to finish because, um, you know, we know Derek Lewis doesn't have a gas tank. So I think he's going to want to come out swinging the first two rounds at least if it even gets out of the first round and, uh, yeah. you know, kind of go from there. Yeah. But my question to you, this is a, a number three versus number seven matchup. You know, this could definitely shake up the heavyweight rankings. Um, yeah, you know, uh, do you think this might be a number one contender? Um, let's see. Um, you got Rosen who's been on the sideline, which seems like forever. <laughs> who's that? Nagano. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he has that fight with uh, you know, Cyril Gain, and then you know, we have John Jones, uh, you know, uh, supposed to fight the winner of that. Um, oh, you got in trouble think, again. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Jones has been taken off the rankings uh, yeah. officially. Um, which is you're, you're a bad man if you if you're fucking fighting for the title and you're not even on the rankings, man. Right. Um. Yeah, it could be. I mean, you know, we we kind of seen uh, everyone else run through the mill there. Uh, Curtis Blades, uh, Volkov. Or does it set up a fight against Stipe? Or Stipe uh, looking out to see the winner of Sir Algain and Naganu. <clears throat> the talk is, you know, from everything that I've been hearing, uh, John is supposed to kind of slide in and make his big comeback. 
Uh, yeah, but that Dave was all before until he, he fucked up again. I mean, Dave after he fucked up, Dana White cracked the fucking whip again and was like, he's done. So, uh, no, I mean, I'm telling you, man, I'm hearing this talk even after the fact. Uh, you know, John just got the, the charges against him dropped. And, uh, you know. Oh, shit. Yeah, so, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. My bad. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that changes. So, uh, <laughs> That changes my my outlook on that. They, like even just hearing myself say that, you know, about John Jones, like that's insane. Like he just got the charges <laughs> dropped so he could fight again. Jesus yeah. Christ. Who's he paying? Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, the 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 Dacus Lewis fight to me quickly turns into the conversation of Cyril Gan and and Ga- uh, Ganyu. Um, I got Cyril Gan and that, you know, everything that I hear, you know, his footwork and his IQ. Um, and then you got Cyril Gaon versus uh, John Jones, which is a mega fight, uh, I think. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I mean, overall, I think it's uh, like you said, you know, the card is is not that big kind of bang, so to speak, to end the year on. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, n- nothing to sleep on. Nothing to sleep on by any means. Uh, I think oh, it'll yeah. be a, an entertaining night of fights. Um and then you got that Woodley Paul. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a hell of a weekend, uh, you know. Of um, was there anything else that you wanted to touch on before uh, we start to wrap this up? I, I agree with everything you said. Like I said, there's you know some uh, some vets on this card for sure um, that yeah. have been around for a while. So like I said, if you're you know if you've been uh, a fan of the fight game and UFC in general, you know you, you you'll notice these names. But um, you know to your casual people, uh, I don't think this card's gonna really sway anyone to to wanting to watch fights. I mean, I could be completely wrong. I mean, it could yeah. be a snooze fest or it could be you know like a entertaining card like last time. But I think um, it's gonna. I think it's going to be entertaining as all get out, you know, for it yeah. not to be a pay per view, obviously, just to be a fight night. I think, and to be the last event of the of the year, essentially, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think it's going to be a hell of a, a fight card. Um, and I want to, yeah. So that's what, something. One last thing. Um, yeah. If you don't mind. So. Yeah, the first actual pay per view of. 2022 is that Cyril Gain versus Naganu, mm-hmm. and that card is going to be stupid. <laughs> That's insane. They, they got uh, they got Moreno versus Figueredo again. That's, That's 270. Uh, yeah, UFC 270. Yep. That's insane that Diaz and Poirier were trying to squeeze in on that card. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they got you know Greg Hardy versus. Olnick, um, I mean, obviously they're still finalizing some things, but that that Brandon Moreno Figueroa fight, uh, let alone is, and and then obviously the Gain Naganyu fight. <laughs> I mean, those two fights on that card is just stupid. Like that's yeah, that's be an insane, insane fight. Um, is there anything else? I'm trying to pull up the card right now. Is there anything no, else they have a, that's uh they have a fight night that's the first fight night of uh of January. That's like the first UFC card. Um that looks like a pretty snooze fest. Um and then the the UFC two seventy one after uh two seventy that has uh Adesanya um on that card. Um, versus Whitaker, too. So yeah, um, yeah, that'd be cool. I, and both of these are going to be. Or you've got uh, UFC two seventies in Anaheim near you. So, oh nice. Um, there you go. Shit, maybe I'll I'll make a road trip. <laughs> yeah. January twenty second. Fuck yeah. Click my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, right, no I'll, well, I won't ramble on. This was uh, this was good. I, I liked it. Um. You know, yeah, I think, we, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, I think we knocked it out of the park. Uh, you know, we did fucking over an hour and uh, uh, shit, man. I, any thoughts on the name? Any thoughts on the name? Um, <clears throat> shit. 
I, I mean, that's something will come to me. The, the thing with the, the names is I feel like anything I come up with is just going to sound absurdly stupid. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm just gonna be like, ah, oh. and then like I'll mention it to you, and you're like, dude, that'd be badass. <laughs> I'll just be like, ah, oh, right. but yeah. Nah. The only thing I came up with was, uh, you know, how Rogan, you know, anytime there's a big upset, he's just like, you just shocked the world. Like, yeah. you know, that, that's the only thing that I can think of is like, you you just shocked the world podcast, or I don't know. Um, I mean, I want to, I, I want to like, like have somewhere in the title that it is like picks two that we're doing um yeah because i mean i think we're gonna be bringing that up every card you know as far as who's favorite what do we think is gonna happen in the fight stuff like that you know um because i think you know the the audience you know are gonna be a bunch of degenerates like us <laughs> throwing money on it so um you know i don't know i'll think about it more i mean tomorrow it kind of sucks because um I, I mentioned to you before i had that uh party i'm going to at night so I might be able to catch some of the prelims, but um, I'm going to be MIA for most of the night. But I have ESPN Plus, so I'll probably actually not look up what's happening and come home and watch it. Because um, yeah. after the card's over, ESPN Plus, you can go and rewatch it. So, um, yeah, I'll probably do that. I mean, if you want to throw me some some updates here and there just with how the card's going, not necessarily yeah. who's winning, um, you know much appreciated but yeah uh, yeah but yeah i'll probably have to to rewatch it and then i don't know what do you want to do with the recap situation i mean um do you want to do that uh, for every card um maybe, like i don't know maybe, if there's news fests you know to quote to quote you <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey we should we should name this we should name it snooze fest <laughs> <laughs> the snooze fest hour <laughs> Snooze I don't think that's gonna really grab any attention to the people. Snooze fest power hour. <laughs> Provided by Short Bus Entertainment. Something like that. Snooze fest power hour. Uh, sure. Play around uh, with that. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. I don't know. I just just anything that you know. I, I think there there'll be a more kind of organic, like, hey, we should talk about this, you know, because this is a lot of shit that kind of updates in the fight game in general. Yeah, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll 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 play it by ear. Um, so yeah, well, you know, I guess for now it's still nameless. Uh, the nameless. What are we calling it? A podcast. <clears throat> yeah. Podcast, what do you want to? Whatever you want to. You want to throw this up on YouTube or? Yeah, it's probably what I'm leaning towards too. Um, okay. You know, uh, but what my thing is is being able to post it on social media like i like facebook i don't think i'm gonna post because the the people on facebook are you know mostly people i don't even talk to or have to do youtube i mean that's honestly what i was thinking like, no just... i know but how i'm saying how are you gonna promote it like you can't just post it on youtube like you gotta post a link to youtube you know to, to get yeah it well i mean you could do you know you could do hashtags uh on youtube and then i don't know if you want to start an instagram account we could do that yeah, well, that's true. I don't think Twitter, that. we could do a social media rollout. You know, we could. I mean, like I said, that 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 my TikTok with the six hundred followers. I mean, I haven't posted in a while, but I mean, I could even since I already have that following, I could easily turn my channel into you know that and putting my link in my profile and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that sounds it's perfect. That sounds like the it so. that sounds like the way to go. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, uh, you know, we'll call it a show there, uh, kids, and um, we'll, I guess we'll try to get this posted on YouTube. Um, yeah, anyone that comes across us, appreciate you. Um, yeah. Spread, spread the, spread the uh, wealth well, of people, yeah. <laughs> and uh, hopefully our picks are uh, come through and we don't look like total clowns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Total clowns with Aaron <laughs> Kevin, that'll be it. I'll wear I'll wear a red nose. Um, yeah. <laughs> Become juggalos. <laughs> so. Become fucking juggalos. Um, all right, bro. Uh, I'll catch you. Uh, enjoy the fights, uh, guys, and uh, you know, catch you on the flip side. For sure. Take care. All right, guys. I'm hitting the stop button. <laughs>